mystery began over 17 years ago in Nasir Ba refugee camp, Pakistan. There hasn't been a week that's gone by that I haven't had an inquiry about her whereabouts. In 1984, photographer Steve McCurry took a photograph of a young girl with an unforgettable fire in her eyes. It was a meeting that would create one of the most arresting portraits in our world. But hers was a face without a name. Tell me about that picture. How you got it? Who is she? With the help of cutting edge technology, Steve has one last chance to find the person behind the face that has haunted him for years. But is it too late? They're gonna destroy this camp and make a housing project here. Did she even survive? Against all odds, Steve's on a journey back to the gateway of Afghanistan to solve one of the most challenging missing person cases of our time. I want to ask this man if he's ever seen The search for the Afghan girl. September 11, 2001, the most devastating terrorist attack on American soil. Among the journalists covering the tragedy that day was photographer Steve McCurry. After decades of covering wars in distant corners of the world, the most tragic event in his life was unfolding just a few blocks from his own home. Many experienced that terrible day in New York, but few shared Steve's intimate knowledge of a country that was suddenly on the minds of many, Afghanistan. With 23 years of experience in that war-torn country, he's produced photographs that reveal the suffering of its people. None of his photos have touched the world more than the timeless image of a young Afghan refugee girl with striking eyes. Eyes that reflect the anguish of refugees worldwide. I can't get those eyes out of my mind. I've looked for her before, but since September 11th, I can't stop thinking about where she is and what might have happened to her. In light of recent world events, renewed interest has emerged about the girl in the photograph, anonymously titled, The Afghan Girl. Joining us now from Bangkok, Thailand, is Steve McCurry, the photographer for National Geographic. He took those award-winning photos of Afghan children, including the one that's on the cover of National Geographic. It's considered one of the most famous pictures ever taken. Tell me about that picture. How you got it? Who is she? I was walking through an Afghan refugee village uh, one day. I was doing a story on the Afghan-Pakistan border. And I passed this tent, large tent, which was being used as an elementary school. I'd asked the teacher about this one particular student with these kind of amazing eyes. She said, you know, she had had to walk with her family for two weeks through the mountains because her village had been bombed by helicopter, helicopter gunships. Several people in her family had been killed, and they had made this two-week trek. And this was the middle of winter through the snow to get to this refugee camp. So it was clear that she had been kind of deeply traumatized by being displaced and family members killed and whatnot. Why so, did that photograph impact you so? I don't think a day has gone by in the last 16 years since I took that picture that I haven't gotten a letter or a phone call or an email asking for, for information. There's certain photographs which have struck a chord in people. I was very happy that several people told me uh, that they had actually volunteered to go work in Pakistan in refugee camps based on that picture. Steve wants to share with her the hope that she's inspired in others. 
He wants to discover the story behind those eyes. What's happened to her? Is she still alive? But time is running out. Any hope of finding the Afghan girl is fading. The refugee camp where he last saw her 17 years ago is being demolished. And war is raging in her homeland. This is probably the last hope of finding her and having the opportunity to thank her. You know, she's given so much to so many people all over the world that it'd be great to be able to give something back to her. He's looked for her before, but for the first time, he'll have access to a team of experts. A forensic specialist with the FBI will examine facial characteristics. Yeah. Iridian Technologies will scan irises in hopes of finding a match for those amazing eyes. Identification is completed. It actually has more information than, uh, than a fingerprint. At the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, Steve's original image will be aged. Retired detective and forensic imaging specialist Glenn Miller will make the Afghan girl into an Afghan woman. It is a combination of a lot of hard work and some science. But science will only be helpful if Steve is able to find some strong leads. It's kind of like trying to find a needle in a field of haystacks. Steve braces for a trip that will take him to the other side of the globe. Six thousand eight hundred and forty-three miles, and two days later, he sets foot in Peshawar, Pakistan. Peshawar is a city with a constant flow of refugees from Afghanistan pouring across its border, fleeing a war that has lasted 23 years and has resulted in one and a half million dead and three and a half million refugees. Given its proximity to the Khyber Pass, which carves its way through the border that separates Afghanistan and Pakistan, Peshawar has seen a host of invaders, countless traders and travelers. Today, Peshawar is a mix of the old and the new. It is a carpet that spans from the second century to the 21st century. It's actually 31 hours since I left New York. But I haven't been here for four years. It's, but it looks virtually the same. I don't think much has changed since I, when I first got here 22 years ago. Still got these buses that are all decked out. Steve begins his search immediately. No time for sleep. The odds are not good. One woman, today possibly covered by a burqa, lost among millions, maybe still a refugee, maybe back in Afghanistan, maybe no longer alive. To increase the odds of finding her, Steve has enlisted one of the most resourceful journalists in Pakistan, Rahi Mullah Yousafzai, editor of a prominent Pakistani newspaper and a writer for Time magazine, is the lead detective on the case. And we also need to get permissions. Right. The he has all the connections. To be able to go to the camp. Okay, should we do that? Maybe right, even right now. 
He is one of only a few journalists to have interviewed Osama bin Laden. We had never met, but I heard the, about this, this uh, Pakistani journalist who had these kind of amazing contacts with the Afghans and with this, in this whole region, and then it's uh, finally got a chance to uh, meet. He has a stake in solving the mystery as well. Rahimullah has chronicled the plight of Afghan refugees during the last 25 years. There are so many Afghan refugees, so many girls, uh, but this one image has lasted. It portrayed the suffering and the fear of the Afghan people. And I think this photograph also was instrumental in portraying that suffering and motivating a lot of people to help the Afghan refugees. Rahi Mullah and Steve set out with only the photograph and one lead. Steve remembers the teacher who was in the tenth school that day in 1984. She was the victim of a landmine and had lost her leg. He believes if they find the teacher, she might know what happened to the girl. Their best hope is to start at a district office where Afghan refugees register for food, shelter and aid. This is a group of Afghan men. Uh, they're fresh arrivals from Afghanistan. The amazing thing is that there's so many refugees that are still coming out after 22 years of war. They're actually waiting to be interviewed by the camp officials so they can get placed in a camp. And this scene could have been easily 15 years ago, and looking at their faces, uh, I'm reminded of that young Afghan refugee girl I took, her photograph from the camp. Her story could be the same as any one of these women sitting here. Officials in the office seem to recall a teacher who meets the description, and they promise to follow up. After 17 years, Steve is on his way back to Nasirbah refugee camp, where he first met the Afghan girl. What was once a temporary solution has become a permanent home for some 100,000 Afghan refugees. Tents have gradually been replaced with more permanent mud homes. While life isn't easy, there seems to be a stability and sense of community that offers some comfort. Now that stability is being threatened. The camp is scheduled to be demolished for a housing project any day, and with it, any clues to finding the Afghan girl will vanish as well. I'm walking in the same refugee camp that I photographed that young girl in 1984. You come back here in a year, and this place will be totally gone, and Nasser Bag refugee camp will be nothing but a memory. So I'm a bit worried that we're not going to be able to find her in time, but we're going to keep pressing ahead. Steve is investigating all possibilities. 